And on the Science Show last week, we met an artist who sailed around the world himself, a most unusual fellow, undoubtedly a genius, and one featured in a book by Dr. David Mabberley, formerly of the Royal Botanic Gardens in Sydney, Painting by Numbers. Here's more. The art historian Bernard Smith once referred to the Austrian painter Ferdinand Bauer as the Leonardo of natural history illustration, noting that his work avoids both the dryness of science and the sweetness of sentiment. There is indeed something magical in the way his watercolour drawings of animals, and particularly the plants, have a three-dimensional quality that the observer can almost embrace. Bauer, who was in Australia 1801-5, to is famous for perfecting a painting-by-numbers scheme he used in the field to capture shades of colour to be interpreted back in the studio in making his illustrations. Bauer's background had been promising. In 1760, he was born to an artistic family in what is now the Czech Republic. His father was court painter to the Prince of Liechtenstein and his mother a competent copyist. But before Bauer was three years old, his father died so his widowed mother had to bring up on her own five children under the age of 12. The next year, the Romanian Norbert Bocius, a keen amateur botanist, arrived to work in one of the local monasteries and employed the copying skills of three of the widow Bauer's boys, including Ferdinand, in working on a botanical project in which he steered them towards a scientifically accurate portrayal of plant form and away from the merely artistically pleasing style of their father. To expedite execution of the drawings, the boys used a colour code for their work, marking their pencil sketches with numbers referring to 140 shades, probably in a colour chart. As so many of the drawings seem to be copies from published books, it has been argued that the coding was originally intended for copying those illustrations. Making colour-coded pencil sketches of published illustrations from the precious books in the monastery library would have allowed the boys, with their potentially messy paints, to complete the watercolours somewhere else more appropriate. Whatever the ultimate roots of this colour-coding system, it was Ferdinand Bauer who perfected this technique. An Oxford professor, John Sibthorpe, was greatly impressed with Bauer and his work and took him on a Mediterranean expedition as an illustrator. Bauer used an improved version of the colour code with numbers up to at least 273. It was a hectic journey, but a supremely successful one and showed that Bauer was very much the field man. He could not only withstand great work pressure from a very demanding English-speaking master, but also put up with rough conditions in foreign countries. After his work was done for what became Flora Greicher, perhaps the most sumptuous botanical book ever, Bauer was recruited by Sir Joseph Banks, who had accompanied James Cook on his first Pacific voyage, for the adventure for which Bauer is justly most famous, as natural history painter on Matthew Flinders' circumnavigation of Australia. This time he used a colour coding system with a thousand shades. He had, at least in his mind, a series of a hundred shades each of red to blue and yellow to brown, with an astonishing 200 of green and up to 100 of white, grey and black. When Flinders tried to get back to England for a replacement for his condemned ship, he left Bauer and Robert Brown, the botanist, to continue working in New South Wales. Bauer took a house on Anson's Farm, one of the leased properties in Farm Cove, now the site of the Royal Botanic Garden and Domain. The settling in of the artist seems to have encouraged the colonists to seek out and bring to them new animals and plants, no doubt with financial gain in mind. Bauer made his famous koala drawings from the first koalas brought into Sydney from Mount Kembla near present-day Wollongong. He bought a portable writing desk, now at the Royal Botanic Gardens Kew, England. It is one of the oldest surviving pieces of European furniture made in Australia. He probably took it to Norfolk Island, where he drew plants including almost all of those restricted to that place, two of which are now extinct. When Bauer returned to England, he had well over 2,000 field sketches of animals and plants, which he was to work up as life-sized watercolours in the style of the Flora Greica. By 1811, Bauer had produced 203 watercolours, 
which are preserved in the Natural History Museum, London, but none was published until 1960. In 1814, Bauer went home to Austria. The fact that he was able to buy a house near Vienna strongly suggests that he had done rather well out of the Australian expedition, and indeed subsequently. He had returned to painting elaborate oils of flowers, which occasionally appear in the art market, though the only known surviving example of passion flowers is that now in the Art Gallery of South Australia. On his death, Bauer's Australian field drawings were valued at just 24 florins, or about $100 in today's money. They, with his dried specimens, went to what is now the Natural Historisches Museum on the Ring in Vienna, where all but a few were mounted with the specimens in the museum, so as to prevent their being removed with other pieces of art that the Kunsthistorisches Museum nearby. The specimens were evacuated to various other sites in World War II, but after the end of hostilities, an incident led to a fire and the destruction of many of them, perhaps due to vandalism by drunken Russian soldiers. About a quarter of Bauer's Australian drawings were destroyed. Today, the remainder are safely archived back in the museum. As to their creator, combined with both artistic and artisanal talents of extraordinary sensitivity, we find in Ferdinand Bauer other traits of an individualist, a worldly plain-speaking man who was undoubtedly angular and gauche in his dealings with the rich or more intellectual people who were his employers and patrons. And there is the earthy robustness of one brought up in the country, along with a canny financial flair, perhaps even miserliness too. Bauer was undoubtedly supremely gifted, brilliantly skilled, self-disciplined, and apparently obsessed with his work, as all agree. But he was not a saint. But he was, as I said, a genius. And David Mabberley's book celebrates him with real flair, painting by numbers. Next week on The Science Show, the 2020 Nobel Prizes and another star from the National Youth Science Forum. Amy, you're on. And don't forget Ruth Morgan's lecture on Thursday coming this week, History in the Future. The Science Show is produced by David Fisher. I'm Robin Williams.